Hello everybody, Jonathan Pulley here with West Coast Weather. Today is November 17th, and we're going to talk about the system that's moving into California right now, bringing some thunderstorms and locally heavy rainfall. Also some breezy conditions with that. And then we're going to take our eyes to this next system that's starting to form over the Pacific right now, and we'll move into Washington, Oregon, and Southwest British Columbia um, starting this weekend, Saturday, and the Sunday bring with it some strong winds to the coastal areas and maybe some localized windy conditions to some of the interior locations. Plus, it will um, generate some mountain snows as the cold air will be moving in with that. And then we'll also take a look at, at that extended. And it looks like we're going to be heading into a dry period after these first couple systems here on the West Coast. So if you're enjoying these videos and finding them informative, just please hit that like button, subscribe button down below because it just helps the video out and get the video out to more people. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Now we're looking at the ridge and trough positions. Here's Alaska, Pure British, Columbia, Oregon, Washington, California. And this there's a trough right now right off the west coast. And this is generating a storm system that's bringing some thunderstorm chances to California and bringing generally dry weather to most of Washington and Oregon. Also bring some foggy conditions to some of the interior locations. Then we take our eyes out to this system that's going to start coming in tomorrow and Sunday. And you can see this the storm system hitting California kind of dying off over the next day or so. And then this next system comes out of the north and kind of merges with it. And then hits, it makes a nice blow into the Pacific Northwest, brings some gusty winds to the coastal areas. That kind of moves off and then as we head into the beginning and middle of next week you can see the um the european mall brings this big ridge over there drying us out and warming us up but it's november sunny days tend to bring fog and also the temperatures will not be getting like 60s or 70s for parts of like washington and oregon but it will be nice out and it looks like maybe a possibly weak system um maybe wednesday or Thanksgiving day, but really shouldn't have that much travel impacts, thankfully. And then the European Mall just keeps that ridge right off, right on the coast and just keeps rebuilding it. This would be a very dry period ending November with a lot of dry weather. So if you want active weather, you do not want this to occur. But now we're looking over 10 to 15 days out. So we'll continue to look at how this ridge is going to be developing over the next um, few days into next week. If we look at the GFS, the same product here, you can see the storm system off the coast die. Then you can see the next Pacific system coming into the Pacific Northwest, diving down over the central US ridge builds over on the GFS again, which is to be expected because this is only a few days out. Ridge build, weak system, maybe a little stronger than the GFS or, um, or just before Thanksgiving, maybe bring some rain to the area. Generally light for right now, it looks like, but we'll take a look at that again in the next couple of days. And then th the system, kind, of, this next system next weekend, kind of, this is still a week out, so we still have plenty of time to look at this, but this is a little close for us to get completely dry days out of this, so we continue to watch that. But the ridge really has that, ridge there again but not as strong as the european mall and then a system clips up ridge kind of builds in again but then the pacific systems start coming back into the area so there's definitely disagreement over 10 days out which is to be expected now let's take a closer look at the the west coast and here this is the mean sea level pressure map and as we play this through you can see the storm off the california coast kind of meander and um lose its strength which it's been it's kind of been just hanging out over here for most of this week so finally it's going to start weakening kind of die and merge with the system that's coming out of the north from the gulf of alaska this is going to start affecting the pacific northwest tomorrow and sunday and you can see this really tight pressure gradient on the european mall this is going to bring some um localized windy conditions to the coastlines maybe even some of the interior locations like would be island the san juan islands and um southern vancouver island as a strong surge of uh, westerly winds may be possible down the strait of juan de fuca that kind of moves off that strong pressure gradient continues bringing those windy and breezy conditions and then we dry out as the high pressure and ridge starts building over the area 
there's a pretty strong storm, which that was our fantasy windstorm that we were looking at in the last video last weekend. But it turns out the models were not really knowing for sure what was going to happen. And now it looks like it's just going to be a fish storm out here, mainly mixing up all the sea life out there. And that kind of just drifts northward as the ridge hangs over us. But we'll take a closer look at that in the following days. Now let's look at um, California, this California system. This is the European model total precipitation inches. So you, you can see as we go through tomorrow and Sunday, you can see the precipitation is just piling up, especially in the mountains and the coastline. Maybe one to two inches for some places along the California coast as showers and thunderstorms move through. Some locally heavy rainfall is possible with this and maybe some urban slash um, some urban flooding with this as well. And you can see some maybe one to two inches up in the Sierra Nevadas. And some snow may be possible uh, way up in the higher terrain, but not expecting too much with that. And as we go through, you can just see that it's really just dry weather for the next week or so. So now let's, we're looking at the European lightning flash density. This is kind of showing where thunderstorms are, at least according to this model. You can see about right now this afternoon, you can see some thunderstorms starting to possibly move into the coastline and inland. Most of this activity will be on the coast, but some of it will make it inland, possibly. There may be a few stronger thunderstorms associated with that, with some gusty winds and small hail. And it's sat this continues in the Saturday with maybe some in the northern California and parts of the valleys as well. May enhance some of the rainfall and snowfall rates up in the mountains, and then that kind of ends by Sunday. If we look at the HRRR, this is a composite reflectivity or what the radar may look like. This is about now. This is Friday afternoon. You can see the stronger showers starting to move in. And there, some of these cells are pretty strong on the HRRR model. And you can see these move over the Bay Area and parts of central and northern California. And this kind of just goes on and on through Saturday as the storm system kind of moves in. And then the second system out of the north comes down. And so thunderstorms and showers will be possible through a good chunk of California through Sunday the 19th and then kind of slowly dying as we go through Sunday. Now let's look at the lightning flash density on the HRRR and see where it thinks the thunderstorms may be. So this is about now some thunderstorms may be moving over towards the Bay Area showers and heavy rain and small hail and gusty winds possible with all that. This kind of continues through Saturday before kind of winding down like Saturday night in the Sunday morning with maybe some more thunderstorms on the coastline up over parts of southwest Oregon and north, uh, northwest California. Now let's take a look at this. Is, um, this is from the National Weather Service, San Francisco Bay Area. Thunderstorms possible through Saturday. Isolated thunderstorms are possible through these areas with the Bay Area and the Central Coast being the main areas for these threats, but some of the activity may make it farther inland. This is from today through the Saturday, and the greatest potential is this afternoon, Friday afternoon into Saturday afternoon. Impacts are lightning, brief heavy rain, localized gusty winds, and small hail. Make sure when thunder roars, go indoors or dash inside if thunder flashes. And now let's take a little, um, a little zoomed outlook at this. You can see this is the Storm Prediction Center's thunderstorm risk for California today. You can see it's basically from Redding all the way down to the edge of Los Angeles. And if we go into the sec this two-day outlook, this is for Saturday. And you see this um, thunderstorm risk kind of starts extending towards maybe even up to the Washington coast and most of the Oregon coastline and in parts of interior northern California and the northern Nevada and all the way down towards Los Angeles. So some more um, fun weather will continue into Saturday before dying off. So now let's take a closer look at the system hit going to be going to the Pacific Northwest Saturday and the Sunday. This is the mean sea level pressure. So as we go through Saturday, you can see the system start approaching the coastline. It's a pretty, um, a pretty decent low pressure system, but it kind of starts weakening as it comes in. So that the winds won't be increasing as it comes in. But if this were to remain its strength, we would be dealing with quite a wind event on some of the coastline. But it doesn't look like that at some point at this point. But some gusts 50 to 60 miles per hour may be possible in some of the exposed beaches and coastlines. And down the, uh, the stream on the Fuca may have some gusts over 50 miles per hour as well as a strong surge of westerly winds. We'll take a look at that right now. So this is 10 meter wind gusts so about, about at the surface. 
You can see as we go through Saturday afternoon, you can see the a cold front associated with the low pressure system starting to move onto the Oregon and Washington coastlines, maybe some gusty winds with that. But as you can see, look at this, the HRRR, this is the, this afternoon's HRRR, actually, this, um, it has the storm system having a bent back occlusion or sometimes referred to as the sting jet. It's basically a part of the storm where the jet stream winds from up in the higher levels of the atmosphere start mixing down to the ground. And this can produce some localized damaging winds. And if we look down here, you can see that the max wind gusts on this map right now is 91 miles per hour right in this area right here. Thankfully, the storm should be weakening as it comes in. But some gusts, look at this, some gusts um, going into the Oregon coast. And this is only one solution. Some of the malls have the strongest winds going up towards the Washington coast. But the HRRR on this run had it going down towards the Oregon coast and the Columbia River opening. But you can see some 60, maybe almost approaching 65, 70 miles per hour on the coastlines um, through Saturday night and the Sunday morning. And that kind of just continues before dying off. And then you can see a westerly surge start trying to come down the street. But the HRR was kind of weak on this room with that. Now let's look at the NAM at the 10 meter wind gust. You can see the cold front coming, starting to come in Saturday evening. And that kind of continues. And then you can see the westerly surge Sunday morning as it comes down the straight one to few. And you can see it, this really strengthens with gusts maybe up towards 50 miles per hour for Whidbey Island. Um, parts of northern um, Jefferson County, so that, that's about Port Towns and Port Angeles area, maybe parts of the San Juans. Also, Vancouver up here may be approaching 50 miles per hour, so definitely some power outages will, will be possible with this, as we haven't really gone strong winds from the west like this all season. So definitely I need to keep an eye out on this. I will likely have another video out tomorrow taking a closer look at this as Models are still in flux on exactly what's going to happen. So, and then the uh, kind of gusty, the breezy winds continuing through Sunday afternoon before dying Sunday evening. If we look for some reason, I accidentally duplicated the names gusts. So now let's look at the European model total precipitation in inches. As we go through, this is not going to be a terribly wet system, but it's definitely going to bring some pretty wet conditions to parts of the Oregon. As we go through Sunday, look at the, some of these tools, uh, maybe over a quarter of an inch from uh, like the lowlands of the Puget Sound, Southwest Washington, maybe a half an inch for the lowlands, maybe up towards an inch for some of the coastal ranges. Portland may be getting up towards a half an inch to a little more than a half an inch. So not a terribly wet system, but still some decent rainfall. And you can just see how it kind of dries out after that. Maybe a weak system on Wednesday bring a little bit more rain. Now let's take a look at, this is um, National Weather Service Pendleton, Oregon. You can see that some of these strong winds will also happen out east. Pendleton, they're, they're forecasting 47 miles per hour for Sunday through Sunday night. And Walla Walla, 43 miles per hour. Golden Dale over along the Columbia River, 48 miles per hour. So definitely some gusty the windy uh, winds as we go through um, Saturday night into Sunday not just for the coastal areas and fog this ridge as it um, continues to uh, last over the area until tomorrow will cause some fog and stratus each um, morning over there in eastern Washington upper and lower Columbia Basin including parts of Idaho as well and then you can this is the snowfall probability of greater than or equal to two inches of snow per 24 hours and you can see there's um, about a 70% chance for some of the Willamette Pass, Di Diamond LK, and Crater Lake as we go through Saturday night into Sunday. And so um, some wintry conditions may be possible at the pass, especially if there's some breezy winds. So just be careful if you're going to be heading out east or heading west through the passes. Now let's look at the long range. This is six to 10 day temperature outlook. You can see that we're kind of trending above average as that ridge builds over the area. If we scroll down to the precipitation outlook for the same time frame, this is from November 23rd to 27th. So about the Thanksgiving time frame. So below average um, precipitation signal for November is kind of uncommon, but it's not unheard of. We can still get dry periods even during our wettest month of the year. So this is pretty good for traveling for Thanksgiving. We shouldn't expect some big snowstorm for the Cascades. So family 
we'll be able to traverse the mountain ranges. If we look at the 8 to 14 day temperature, Alec, again, above average possibility, but this is all going all the way to from the November 25th to December 1st. This is still over a week away, so we still have plenty of time to look at this, but the ridging kind of tries to hold on in this time frame, but some models start bringing some troughing back in the area. And then the 8 to 14 day precipitation outlook kind of shows that uncertainty about near normal precipitation, so that means that we sh should be expecting at least some precipitation by this point, because Basically, every day of November has some sort of precipitation. So plenty, plenty of stuff for us to still look at as we continue through this weekend into next week. Well, that's it for this video. We got this storm system moving in the California right now with um, potential for some thunder and lightning down there with some locally heavy rainfall. Then this next system is going to start moving in Saturday afternoon through Sunday for Washington, Oregon, Southwest British Columbia. And I'll likely do a video tomorrow on that system that's going to start moving to the Pacific Northwest. But if I don't do that, I'll talk to you guys on Sunday. And if you like this video and just enjoy watching my videos, just please hit that like button and subscribe button down below. Also hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss out on any new videos I post. And so take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.